Hi there, how's everyone doing? My name is Luis, I'm from Brazil, and you're tuned into the Eternal Kingdom channel. I want to get real with you for a moment. Did you know that in a short while the Bible, which is the Word of God, will be practically banned all around the world? There are already some countries where preaching the gospel is forbidden, but it's going to happen all over the globe. Maybe that doesn't matter to you. Maybe you don't believe in God. You only believe in this life. Perhaps you think that once you die, that's it forever. That there's no resurrection, no judgment, that God doesn't care about anything or doesn't even exist. But actually, God does exist. And he promised that one day he would send his son to die for our sins, rise again for our justification, and that the gospel would be preached in all nations before the end comes. But before that, there would be persecutions. The world would be utterly corrupt. The Bible talks about this. The Bible describes the world today, 2023, as a corrupt and highly technological society where people don't care about anything. Just look at social media and all the things we see happening around the world. And we don't pay attention because everything is being normalized. Everything is presented to us and shown as they're presenting all of this to us as if it's perfectly natural and we get a ton of distractions on social media. But the Bible says that one day the sun would come and he did, he died and came back to life and his teachings are being spread all over the world. There's a huge number of people believing in the gospel and they know that the sun will return and he hasn't yet because he's got plans. Yeah, he hasn't come back yet because there are things that still need to happen. Actually, before the end times and before Jesus comes back to put an end to all the wrongdoings on earth and establish his kingdom, the church will go through some hard times on earth. The gospel will be hounded, banned, you name it. There's a reason why you're hearing this message. Maybe you're already clued up about all this, but it doesn't hurt to go over it again. And if you're not familiar, you better pay close attention. You don't have much time to make a choice. In fact, you don't know when you're going to kick the bucket. You're breathing. And as long as you are, you get to choose. But actually, I'm not just talking about one single person. The whole globe is running out of time. The entire world has to make a choice because there will be a point where sin has gone too far. People will become so wicked that the situation will be irreversible and the gospel will be persecuted, kicked off the internet. Next thing you know, the Bible will be banned. And when that time comes, nations will wage war again, just like they did in World War I and II. The Bible says there will be a World War III and the end of it. So actually, we're at the end game. Jesus said in the Bible that when he's coming back, the world would be a Sodom and Gomorrah. Do you know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah? We'd see hunger everywhere, plagues all over, earthquakes, tsunamis. All this has been predicted in the Bible. Matthew chapter 24. Things like this have been happening since forever. But what Jesus is referring to in Matthew 24 is on a much larger global and final scale. Just look at the world today. I believe in the Bible because everything it said would happen is happening. Many things have already happened, others are happening, and the final ones will happen since the end times are here. We can see it, but the devil has a plan. Actually, this plan has been in action for a long time and it's nearing its final stage. The book of Revelation says that the final stage is when the whole world is connected. Nations are linked and a technologically advanced world is in place. At that moment, Jesus will intervene. And that's when your choice and decision come in. It's hard for me to talk about this because in order to discuss and prove it with Bible passages, I need the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is the last book in the Bible, full of mysterious codes and riddles. The word apocalypse doesn't mean the end of the world and total destruction as many people think, or as some TV shows want you to believe. Apocalypse in Greek means revelation. The Lord is revealing all the things that would happen in this world and all the things that will happen in the new world. Although Revelation predicts many wars and bad things, the book of Revelation also promises wonderful things. A restoration of this whole system, a restoration of the earth, and a resurrection of the dead. That's where the devil comes in to try to confuse things. The devil actually has a plan to get rid of the Bible because the Bible predicts these seven points I'm going to tell you about. This is just a brief summary of all that the Word of God prophesizes. The Word of God predicts, firstly, God's creation of man and woman, forming a couple, and from them, life is born. This is God's law, this is nature, this is the law. And how did God create the world? Secondly, the Word of God envisions God's actions in the Old Testament, where God weaves a history with humanity. Despite many things happening and corruption taking hold, God has to punish the past world. He punished the past world and has kept punishing many generations. He establishes a new phase. His own people are punished when they sin. This is reality. But we have God's actions in the Old Testament. And it's through these actions that God predicts his son's arrival to all nations. Thirdly, the word of God states that Jesus would die and rise again. The gospel would be spread to all nations. Point four, 
The resurrection word is in the gospel. The gospel is about preaching the death of Lord Jesus, his resurrection, and the promise of resurrection for all those who believe in him. And it's not just the resurrection of believers, but also the resurrection of those who don't believe. They'll rise again and be judged one by one, which the Bible refers to as the great white throne in the book of Revelation. But those who believe in Jesus will rise first, join a new world, which the Bible calls the millennium. It promises a thousand years of peace on earth, and that will happen because everything the Bible said would happen is happening. Point five, the word of God predicts a judgment. So within the gospel that talks about death and resurrection, it also mentions a judgment that will come upon the whole world. Point six, the preaching of eternal life is promised in the Bible and explained. How does that work? Point seven, the resurrection for eternal punishment. If on one hand there's eternal life, on the other hand, there's eternal death. And in eternal death, the Bible speaks of judgment, of a court. And for all those who didn't believe in the Lord, who heard the gospel but didn't believe and did bad things, they'll go to the lake of fire, a place of eternal punishment. That's what the Bible predicts. You might have heard someone say that if you don't believe in God's word, he will throw you into hell, as if he's a tyrant or an evil God who says either believe in me or go to hell. This is preached by many pastors in Brazil and actually all over the world. But that's not what the gospel of God says. Lots of people have died without hearing the word. Many people will face judgment, but that doesn't mean they'll be condemned. Those who will be condemned are the ones who did evil deeds, like killing and stealing and not repenting. Actually, you don't even need the Bible to know that killing and stealing is wrong or that cheating is wrong. So the actual message of the Bible is quite different from what's often preached because many pastors don't do their job properly. Many churches are more concerned with members, money, and business. And when these things happen, I don't get upset. It makes me see that the Bible is telling the truth because the prophets in the Old Testament talked about this. Jesus said this would happen. Christ's apostles who preached about Jesus' death and resurrection, eternal life, the coming judgment, they also said that these things would happen, that the gospel would be corrupted and distorted by God's own people, which the Bible calls apostasy. All these things were already foretold in the Bible. And it also mentions that those kinds of people would get caught out by the real followers of God. So God's gospel isn't quite what you might have heard. Perhaps you've been told you're headed to hell if you don't believe. Granted, hell is a thing, but the term isn't even really legit. The Greek word is different. Technically, calling it hell is kind of a misinterpretation. But punishment is indeed real. What the Bible refers to as the second death, because all humans experience the first death, all people go through it. The second death, all people, well, almost all, will also face. The second death only applies to those who've committed evil deeds and they'll be judged and held accountable for their actions. A heap of people have died and will die without hearing God's word. However, they haven't done anything wrong. They'll be judged and someday they will resurrect. That's what the Bible refers to as the first and second resurrection. All this is a bit tough to talk about, but when you study the Bible, you start to get a handle on it. It's beautiful, really. You see the fairness of God, and his love for all of us. To put it simply, the devil wants if salvation's word is gonna be preached, it should be done so in a twisted way, in a way that people think is unfair, in a way where people hear about salvation but don't actually get saved. This is all predicted in the Bible. The book of Revelation talks about it. Actually, what he really wants is to remove the word of salvation from the world, just like happened in many previous generations. There were times on earth when the word of salvation wasn't preached. There are places right now, as we speak, where it's illegal to preach the Bible. You get killed if you preach God's word in places like North Korea and many Islamic countries, all condemned by God's word in both the Old Testament and the New. So to get the devil to take away this word of salvation from the earth, he came up with a plan, a really well thought out and executed plan. If you look at the book of Revelation chapter 13, you'll see that God talks about two beasts. One is from the sea and the other is from the earth. These are symbolic things that can only be understood if you look at the passages from the Old Testament because they're revelations for God's servants. It's a way that God found to denounce both the ancient world and the current world through codes, and there are purposes for that. The beast of the sea talks about United Nations Nations that will join together but won't actually stay united. They'll join up for their own interests. In reality, they're against each other, but they make alliances only for their interests. Isn't it funny when you look at today's world and see all of this? 
the beast of the earth with all its characteristics. It already speaks of a corrupted, distorted gospel being preached and all of it is to deceive humanity. So the devil set up some plans to be able to deceive people. God foreseeing all this warned us in advance so those who believe in him firsthand can announce these things to the nations. Even in a time like this, such a confused mess of a time when social media is corrupting children, youth, even grown-ups. All social networks are compromised. Yeah, God uses them to spread the gospel. But the truth is, they're corrupted. A cell phone can be used for good or bad. Money can be used for good or bad. A sword in the hand of a just person establishes justice. But in the hand of an unjust one, it kills. Any weapon in the hand of someone who fights for justice should establish it. But in the hands of the unjust, there are robberies, murders, all kinds of death. Like the devil, he hates the word of salvation, that you preach about death and resurrection. That this life isn't just what our eyes are seeing, there's a life after death or eternal life or eternal death. The devil doesn't want this to be preached. So he came up with a plan, a plan to poison humanity. He makes people consume garbage called food and social media and the media work to spread it. He contaminates people through their mouths because if you eat trash every day, it affects your mind, your sleep, and makes it easier to deceive mankind. And this is already established all over the world. The whole world eats trash. Only a few care about their diet. The devil needs to poison the world and then corrupt it with his vision. Look at this world. Look at the porn industries. All kinds of porn you can think of. Nowadays, a kid, a teenager, with a phone in their hand has access to all of that and parents don't control it. Instead, Parents give their kids a phone to keep them occupied and get influenced by social media. There's no control. And that's how the devil deceives children, teens and adults, because social media is addictive. It's a distraction. All those hundreds of movies, TV shows, they're all there to distract humanity. I watch movies and shows too, but I know how to separate the good from the bad. I know how to manage my time and realize it can be a time waster. Instead of learning something useful, you get caught up in watching shows and movies, getting sucked into the online world, Facebook, Instagram, and many others. What can we say about this world? And what about this world that's always on, day and night? Things weren't like this a hundred years ago. You can see that there's been a huge change in the world in just a short time, less than a hundred years. And this is mentioned in the book of Revelation because it's the end times. The New Testament, and especially the book of Revelation in the New Testament, talks about how the world would be just before Jesus' return. Homosexuality, all these social networks promoting it, movies, series, soap operas, have been influencing humanity to accept it, and humanity has indeed accepted it. Nowadays, it's considered normal. Fifty years ago, it wasn't normal. But today it is. There are even laws now to protect it. And you can get in trouble if you speak against it. But the Bible talks about it. See if you can grasp the devil's plans. The devil uses this whole world. In fact, Revelation chapter 12 says that Satan, the ancient serpent, pointing us back to the events with Adam and Eve, is the deceiver of the whole world. And God allows this to happen because everyone has the power of choice. After all, before the devil deceives the whole world, the word was preached and is still being preached. But God also says the word would be taken captive. The truth would be thrown down and trampled upon, just like what happens in many movies, where injustice prevails over justice for a moment, but then the heroes come and restore the good. It's just like in the Bible. So God, who is all-powerful, supreme King of Kings, Lord of Lords, has to let these things happen. These things need to happen because heaven is watching everything. All the actions of all people are being recorded in books. This is to show people where they'll end up without God. Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. The wars of today are different than the wars of the past. These days, wars involve high-tech weapons and even biological weapons. That's where people will end up without God. Don't you find that interesting? The Bible, the book of Revelation written about 2,000 years ago, already talked about this. It described this technological world with nuclear weapons, but it used code so that message would be understandable by both the current generation and future generations. And only God can do that. That's why when you look at Revelation chapter 13, you see a beast resembling a leopard with bear's feet, a lion's mouth, seven heads, ten horns. What is that? How horrifying. A leopard-like beast with bear's feet, a lion's mouth. How strange. 
and then another beast emerges from the earth. It has only one head and two horns, looking like a lamb, but speaking like a dragon. There are codes in each word. God is directing us to the old books of the Bible. They are from the Old Testament, but still relevant today, to reveal the truth to us. The messages in the book of Revelation are encrypted and can only be understood and unveiled if you connect the dots. If you forget the Old Testament, you'll end up with a different kind of gospel. If someone were to disregard the prophecies of the Old Testament and say that the Old Testament isn't relevant anymore and that we should only believe in the New Testament, then you'd be presenting a different gospel to people because the Bible includes everything from Genesis to Revelation. True, there's the Old Testament and the New Testament and there are things from the Old Testament that we can't practice anymore and things from the New that should be practiced. But the new can only be understood through the old. That's why many people don't quite get the symbolism in the book of Revelation or the message it's trying to convey. The whole book of Revelation is based on the law, the Psalms and the prophets. In fact, you don't even need the New Testament that much to interpret Revelation. But of course, the New Testament is important because it tells us about Jesus' actions on earth, the establishment of churches and how those churches were attacked by the devil in the past. So it's likely that similar things will happen in the future. Basically, the Bible is a single, unified book, which is why in Revelation, it says that I am the beginning and the end, Genesis and Revelation. It also says I am the Alpha and Omega, which are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet where the Bible was written. I am the beginning and the end because every word in the New Testament so like every word in the book of Revelation, it takes us back to the stories in the Old Testament. In just one chapter, God manages to sum up several generations, a bunch of things that happened. That's why I believe in the word of God, especially with the book of Revelation. Got it? So when you see those beasts in the book of Revelation, you're looking at nations. Those monsters, those beasts, those animals with all those features are nations. And someone without the spirit of God can't understand why God looks down from above at nations today and sees beasts. Those with the Spirit of God can understand. Whoever has the Spirit of God knows that the world as it is now, it's a world that kills nature, kills people, kills animals, kills nature. Nature is all trapped. When you look at any street, you see those poles standing and those wires connecting all the poles in all the neighborhoods, in all the cities. This is happening all over the world. It's like chains imprisoning us and imprisoning nature. You can see that nature is surrounded. Even when you go to a park, a really nice big park, if you look from above, you'll notice that park is surrounded by buildings, by internet connection towers, and I'm talking about a park where nature is slightly more free. You're trapped too. We're in a surrounded system. We're just numbers to the system. Over here in Brazil, it's called CPF. Each of us is just a number to the government, to the point where these days we are much more controlled than we used to be. When a person is born, they're already born with a number used to control them. Your bank accounts are controlled. You're being listened to through your cell phone. All of this was foreseen in the book of Revelation. Have you ever heard of the mark of the beast, the 666? I'm not going to explain right now why this particular number and why it's repeated three times, but this number within Revelation, connected with the whole word of God, reveals the whole technological world. The mark of the beast, it unveils the geopolitical, technological and religious world. The bad part, the false part. That's what the number 666 in the Bible means. You need the stories from the Old Testament to understand this. Then you need to know about some things that happened a few years ago. And look at the world exactly as it is today. It's no use just looking at the world today and you won't understand what the mark of the beast means. You need to look at the world today through the prophecies of the Bible, especially the Old Testament. The New Testament has its significance. It's a document that originated from the Old. But those codes in Revelation, they're better understood by the Old Testament. And that's what many churches don't get. Why do you think God wanted the last book of the Bible to resemble the Old Testament and not the New? Because God knew that many churches today would only preach the New Testament and not the Old. So it's an incomplete story, doesn't make much sense, it's more of a religious thing. So, you, so you've heard of the mark of the beast, right? It's a system. But Revelation also talks about the image of the beast. And this is where our minds open up. The image of the beast, which I've already explained to be kingdoms, will have a general ruler. Yes, the Bible talks about it. The Bible calls him the Antichrist. But this general ruler will govern many nations. So it's all connected. The beast isn't just one man. The beast is United Nations. 
like it is today. When we look at the book of Revelation as a whole, it all matters. See, in chapter 13 of Revelation, there's this image of a beast. It's said to be created by humans. We've got this beast, right? And it's marked. This mark is used for control, and through it we can see the political, religious, and technological realities of our world. But also, we've got this image of the beast. It's something that would be crafted by people in this generation. And this beast's image, as you might now realize, is an image of nations. It embodies a whole program. It's what dictates who lives and who dies. Because Revelation says every person would bear a mark, either on their forehead or hand. Without this mark, no one can buy or sell which basically means no mark, no food or drink. You know what Elon Musk is suggesting, right? How about some other companies? They're proposing putting a chip in people's heads, but it's not just about a chip or a mark, though that will happen too. What's more critical to understand is what's behind all this. An attempt to indoctrinate humanity, to infiltrate minds with beliefs against the Bible, against God, and make your hard work serve this system. It's a system where people are endlessly working, being polluted by consuming nonsense, seeing and hearing rubbish, talking about things godless, not caring about anyone's death, ignoring justice, only caring about money and their own lives. And so they're becoming, they're evolving into, so they end up being deceived and deceiving others. They deceive and are deceived themselves. That's why I love the word of God. It frees us from all that. It makes us see the purpose of all these things and why they have to happen. If people are going to make an image for the beast, what will they use? Technology. And not just any technology, artificial intelligence. Because it's with AI that this image of the beast comes alive. Able to think and track through the mark that's part of the system. So even though Revelation is a difficult book to understand, it's not impossible. Despite Revelation being presented in codes, these codes reveal things about this world. I can look at Revelation today with great clarity and explain each part of it. I'm doing a summary here so you can understand the devil's plan and the decision you have to make. So, to wrap up, let's make sure you understand this part of the message. The devil, he's going to stifle the spread of the gospel. First on the internet. And he has a plan and goals to put into action. Then he's going to hinder its spread in homes, in churches, till it reaches a point where the world will plunge into darkness all over again. I wish I could explain the details to you, but I can't go into it. It would just get too complicated. So darkness will come just like day turns into night. You know there's light and darkness, just as there's good and evil. It's a battle between good and evil, and the Bible predicts another era of darkness. For now, the word is still being preached. If you're able to listen, there's still light in the world, but the world's light will be extinguished, and a time of darkness will arrive. The Bible will be seen by mankind as an evil book, a book of a wicked God, a God who kills, a God who favors some over others, a God who hates homosexuals, a God who hates anyone who doesn't believe in his word, a God who kills, a God who incites conflict. The Bible will be twisted. The words of Jesus, they'll be taken out of context. They'll be warped. The words of the apostles too, the words of the prophets. There's a whole mechanism in place for all this to happen. When you have a corrupt world like today, and this corrupt world is exposed by the Bible, the devil takes the opportunity to stop the preaching of the gospel. Because if you take any sentence out of context, it becomes dangerous. Right now, many churches are saying that the Bible needs to be rewritten. Churches, that means it's part of the apostate people, like the beast of the earth with two horns that looks like a lamb. It talks about Jesus. Jesus is represented as a lamb throughout the Bible. The beast has two horns like a lamb but speaks like a dragon. In the Bible, the dragon represents the devil connected to the nations. So there are already churches saying this. There are people from the system, the beast from the sea, saying that the Bible shouldn't be taught. It's considered a book of hate speech, not accepting, showing favoritism, a book that causes confusion. So, this will be enforced as law in nations. First, to avoid scandal, it will be enforced online and it'll be forbidden to preach the gospel on the internet. If you preach about salvation, you must preach about what God said about men who have relationships with men and women who have relationships with women. You have to preach about the coming punishment. If you're going to preach about eternal life, you have to preach about eternal judgment 
and nations won't want to accept this anymore. This will be presented on social media TV shows as hate speech. It'll become a legal issue. It will be taken to the courts. And so laws will be established against the Bible. So here's the progression and it makes sense because that's how Satan operates in humanity. Initially, you'll see the Bible getting banned on social media, perhaps not entirely, but partially. They'll put up restrictions. Like if you talk about homosexuality, your channel will get taken down. You'll be discouraged to discuss it. Preaching about salvation for some and then damnation for others is considered hate speech. Any channel that says this sort of stuff is going to get demonetized. Nope, it'll be taken down. You'll get a warning. You talk about it again, you get two warnings. You say it a third time, you get your third warning and all your hard work just goes to waste. It gets taken down. And even though you might be thinking, just switch to another platform. Well, that's what artificial intelligence is for. AI is already being programmed to track these trigger words. And when a law is enacted, just like there are some restrictions on YouTube, they will be the ones I'm talking about. It's going to be against YouTube's guidelines, mentioning the word of truth. So you'll be taken down. And then this AI will start hunting you down on other platforms. So it's going to become normal for people. This will become the new normal. Sure, it might cause a bit of outrage at first, but eventually it will be normalized and then accepted as a law, just like what happened with homosexuality. There's no way to fight it, but it will happen gradually, bit by bit. Don't be shocked by this, it's gradually happening. But the church won't stop. The word of God says the wise will understand and become stronger and will push forward, yet they'll have to pay a price. Daniel chapter 11 with Revelation chapters 11, 12 and 13. This is what we're being told. So when preaching the word of God online is no longer allowed, people will leave social media. Artificial intelligence will be used against the church, against the word of salvation. Then people will start congregating at homes. People will be hunted down there. Neighbors will snitch. Didn't Jesus mention this? That it would be father against son, son against father, mother against son, son against mother, daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Your enemies will reside within your own household. The world will hate you because of me, Jesus said. We might not fully understand Jesus' words due to lack of reflection. But now we understand why Jesus said this. Your neighbors will rat you out. People who hear will snitch. But the persecution doesn't stop there. You'll be arrested, just as an example. If you're caught preaching, you'll be arrested. Like what's happening in some parts of Russia, North Korea, some Islamic countries, China. In other words, the devil has already planted this in various nations, but the Bible prophesies that he will plant this thinking in all nations. And even when the world gets used to Christians being silenced, with the truth being disregarded, with people getting arrested, the church will still rise. Many will start prophesying on the streets, and God will give these men powerful powers. Not the power to kill, steal, or fight physically, but powers from heaven, where signs will be performed, healings and miracles will occur. So, after the devil brainwashed humanity and got them cool with all this junk, the real persecution will start with folks getting killed. And they're gonna drop like flies. That's what the beast's image is all about. If you hit up the book of Revelation, you'll see this image decides who lives and who bites the dust. And only those with the beast's mark will make it something on their forehead or hand. And that's what syncs you up with the system. In other words, you're on board with all of this system's BS. You're cool with burning the Bible, with outlawing the gospel, and the whole world will be a hot mess. What we call murder now will just be another Tuesday. Righteous people who speak their mind will get knocked off in broad daylight. There's going to be a point in time, which the Bible refers to as the final week. It's the last seven-day stretch prophesied by Daniel. It's the ultimate moment in history. It's a period of darkness, but the light comes after. Jesus is going to drop in from heaven and he'll step in. He'll deliver on all the stuff he said he would do. You might not believe it, but your disbelief doesn't change what's going to happen. Actually, you may say you don't believe, but there are already countries doing it. Videos have been posted online, but the platforms banned them because they're intense stuff but we still have time, we still have the chance to spread God's word. God's word must be preached worldwide as a testimony to all nations. And then Jesus says, the end will come. That's mentioned in Matthew 24. So you still have time to change your life 
and believe that there's life after this one. Life today isn't just about eating, drinking, sleeping and working, and then going back to, that's not what true life is all about. What makes me happy about all this is that I know I don't have to go to a church or religion to know God. The Bible is right there in your house. You can talk to people, you can make reading the Bible a regular thing, and that's how you're going to get to know God. God will lead you to the right people who can explain what's in the Bible to you. Sure, you can go to a church, but it's tough to find one where you'll actually hear the truth. A church where the pastor isn't interested in your money and isn't feeding you a bunch of lies. Because let's face it, that's a thing in this world. I don't go to any church. I don't set foot in any church out there. But I know God's people are in these churches. And the Bible's message is, get out of there. My people don't touch anything defiled. Don't be part of any deceit. It's like God is saying, I've warned you all about this. Then God says, come to me, leave it and come to me, and I'll welcome you as my sons and daughters. You'll be mine. So to believe in the word of salvation, all you have to do is open the Bible in your house and read, and you just talk to God. Can someone help you? Of course, God will guide you to the right places. What's important is that you understand everything I'm saying and realize the end is near. So I'm using artificial intelligence to say this to you guys because my desire to spread the gospel is huge. I could be saying this from here only to people in Brazil, but I want people to hear it in other languages and know the true justice of God, that you can have a relationship with God inside your own home. So I ask you to pray for the people here in Brazil, those who help me, because my life here in Brazil is supported by many brothers and sisters. Voluntarily, I lived in Japan for 30 years, and after that, God brought me here, and my entire life is supported by these brothers and sisters. So pray for them, because all this work I do here is thanks to them. So seek God while He can be found. Open the Word of God, read it, and talk to God in your prayers, and God will guide you through the rest. Alright? So that's it. Thanks for watching the video this far. Peace out, everyone.